So this is the latest episode of the, the Talking Balls podcast. I always try and make the guests laugh when I say that, but it's the Talking Balls podcast. And uh, it's part of the Snooker 19 PlayStation League. And, uh, and I'm really chuffed. I, I'm Raito74. You'll perhaps know me from the Gamer Tag. A um, bit old for a Gamer Tag, but I still do it. And uh, I've got Oliver Lyons with me today. So uh, a, a nice a nice name that a lot of people know. And um, Oliver, just thanks a lot for getting involved with this. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. That's good to see you. Um, I'm just interested to kick us off, really. It would be just good to know a little bit about, you know, how you've chosen snooker. And I, and I think from looking at your social media, you, you're quite a promising footballer as you were coming up as well, weren't you? Yeah, when I was younger, I used to spend a lot of time playing footy. Um, I love footy. It's, uh, I love still playing now, but obviously not to, not to any sort of level that's any good anymore. But yeah, when I was younger, I used to just want to spend time with my dad, who was always at the snooker club. So every like school holiday or every time I got a day off, I, I would uh, be at the snooker club, and then it just turned out that I was I was quite good at it. So I told my dad I wanted to do it more seriously, and he told me that I had to make a decision, and uh, I just decided that I was going to play snooker a lot more. Right. Yeah. What sort of age was that then when you made that choice? I was about 12. Right, okay. And then um, ever since then, I, I uh, practised almost every day after school. And yeah, that's how I first got into it, really. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose, I mean, did you have any mates who, I'm thinking back to when I was at school and there was only a handful of people even then that I can remember who ever talked about snooker. I mean, was there people around you who were into it? Not really, not, not any of my friends that went to our school with, um, I obviously got quite close friends with Sanders and Lamb because mm. we're around the same age and uh, well he was playing here as well at the same time and yeah we've uh, we've been like best of friends since we were about 14 now so it's quite a while. Oh brilliant yeah have you met a lot on this circuit you know in terms of the, the pro games? I've met a lot of people. No have you met have you met kind of mates in in the game itself actually playing against them competitively have you had many games against people that you've known outside of the game um not really no Matt. um some of my friends from 40 sometimes come down and we have the odd game but not really right and, and, and who are your best mates have you got mates on the, the world sneaker tour who you know you consider close mates yeah judge trump's probably uh, one of my best mates um Obviously Sanderson, but he is not on tour at the minute. Stephen Hallworth, mm. Matt Sell, just people like that. And my dad, obviously, I've got to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Be, yeah, you'd be in trouble, wouldn't you, if you didn't? I mean, that that comes across really nice. I'm gonna. Uh, I was trying to not mention your dad, but it seems silly not to because you, he's such a significant figure in your life and in your career. And um, and when you look at your social feed, you've been really happy for him. I think you know, talk about kind of Q Club and going through and getting back on the tour I mean it sounds sounds like you really made up for him from what you've been putting but to be honest last couple of years we've we've had it quite tough but who hasn't you know everybody's got problems but it's just about how you deal with them isn't it and I don't think we've dealt with them as well as we could have and to see him practicing as hard as he still does and then to get through last week it, it really made me emotional to be honest and I had a couple of happy tears for him and he's just my dad in it at the end of the day and I just I just want to see him win all the time. So I was proper buzzing last week, yeah. Yeah, I oh know that's fantastic, isn't it? So so I mean people will know who your dad is, but just in case, we we're talking about Peter Lyons who is, is now back on the tour again and and, uh, and I and I heard a podcast he did with I think it was Talking Snooker, it was just out I think it was last week, and, and I thought that was brilliant because he talked a lot about, I mean, the age came into it, didn't it? And he was talking about getting onto the, the tour and feeling that, you know, if you deserve it, it doesn't matter how old you are. And, and, and it could be that some people might be a little bit disparaging about that and think, well, it's just for the youngsters coming through. But, I mean, he's testament to the fact that he's been doing this a long time. He's got good at it and he's still competitive. Yeah, he's been pro for like 30 years, so he must be doing something all right. <laughs> The oldest person as well to ever get through Q school, so why not? If you can, if you can still play to a decent level, high level, then just carry on. Yeah, yeah. He loves the game as well. He, he absolutely loves the game, so he practices yeah. all the time. 
still like six, seven hours a day. And wow. It's actually a credit to our whole family. Yeah, yeah. And you, you clearly look up to him and clearly there's a lot of respect there. Oh, yeah, but he's literally my idol. Like, everything he does is just what I want to do, obviously. I'd like to go one better and win a tournament, which he hasn't managed to do. But just the way he lives his life every day, he just works so hard. And I can only really look up to him. I've never, ever had a bad word ever to say about him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, and he comes across really well on, the, you know, certainly on that podcast last week and that. He just comes across as someone who's obviously dead passionate about what he does. Um, and that really rubs off, I think. I mean, you, you, you're the benefactor in a way, aren't you? You've had that close support. And yeah. Kind of, uh, I mean, did you help him warm up for the tournament? Was there anything in terms of how you played a role in supporting him to do his best on that as well? Not really. We had a, we had a decent chat. A couple of months ago when he was he was struggling with his game and I was struggling as well and people don't realise how hard it is to have your dad on tour too because if if I lose before he plays then most of the time he loses too if he loses before I play it's, it's so tough to get yourself back up for the game and right it is it's no one can really compare it's it's very difficult and but a couple of months ago, he was talking to me that maybe it's time to give up. And I just said, like, do what you feel like you should do. But at least if you want to carry on playing, you've got to practice. You've got to just keep practicing as hard as you can. And he really did up it. He probably lost his way for a couple of months because he was losing and his confidence was gone. And I said, I just said, listen, you've got to just play as much as you possibly can and just be, just enjoy it. You're like, you're getting older now. And, and it, I think it worked. It, I managed to hit home a little bit and he, he practiced as hard as he possibly could and he got through the first event, so you can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't, you know, I don't want to pry and, you know, welcome to kind of give a short answer if you want, but you kind of alluded to it's been a tough time over the last kind of year, 18 months or so. I mean, I, I don't know if there's anything more you wanted to say about that. They were just the death in the family of uh, my nan and my dad's mum. Oh, just God. We both struggled massively. She was a she was a big character in our lives, and yeah, it was tough at the time. And I think we held on to it, and I don't know. It was just I just couldn't seem to get over it. And then he was mm. trying to help me out, and he lost focus on himself. And right at the end of the day, he's my dad, and he he just tried to make sure that me and my sister was okay. And he, we we all lost that way. Yeah, no, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Oliver. You know, that's uh, it's, fine, no, it's, it's hard, isn't it, when it's somebody big in your family? It but is, bet... and then COVID hit as well. And then we were just basically sat at home for a year with our own thoughts. And yeah, it, it's a massive struggle, isn't it? It's not just for me and my dad, it's a massive struggle for everybody. Like sometimes your own thoughts can just do some really bad things to you, can't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, and I guess you haven't had as much of the distraction of being able to get out as much, really, have you? I know that there's still been snooker being played, but it's not been the same, though, has it? No, it hasn't. It's, it's just... When you was at tournaments as well, you couldn't really even socialise with anybody because if right. they tested positive for COVID, like, you was out at the tournament as well. You had to then isolate for two weeks. And yeah. people, were just, people were just staying away from everybody, so... Yeah, I hadn't even uh, I hadn't even been out with Jude recently. We used to go right. out all the time. <laughs> is he is he a good lad to be out with then, is he? Oh yeah, I, I love him, I do. He's one of my best friends and he's just he's helped me for years and I owe him. No, uh, quality. It's nice, isn't it, when when somebody at that kind of level can take the time out and if you build up that friendship as well, it's uh, stuff you don't see with, really from a fan's point, do you? It's it's kind of stuff you guys on the tour you make connections no doubt yeah people always say like you shouldn't have it you shouldn't have any friends on tour because you're there <laughs> to be everybody and i ain't got that many friends but for some reason me and Judd, we just click and he obviously likes my company and i like his company and we just became really good friends yeah yeah I, and I, I suppose there's something about and it kind of brings me on something i was going to mention actually about you know the generation really of, of snooker players and 
you know, we kind of had the gods of snooker thing on not long ago, and that was taking us back a little bit further into the 80s. Um, and there's something, isn't there, about perhaps where the next generation of stars come from. You've still got people like Joel at the top and Neil Robertson and Mark Selby, all of those kind of players, John Higgins, you've still got a group there who are around the top end of it. Um, I mean, could you see that coming through in terms of, you know, your generation, really? I mean, it, how are you hopeful that between yourselves and, and guys around your age and generation, is there enough people coming through, do you think, that, that might be able to take over as the new guard, if you like? I actually don't think there is. I'm not sure, though. There's, there's not many, there's not enough young people on the tour now. Right. Even myself, I'm 26 next week, so that's not really that young anymore. <laughs> and I'm probably, apart from the young Chinese lads who are all really good, there aren't many young English people on the tour now. Right, yeah. Just well, people like Jack, Jack Lazowski, who's probably the next that's uh, mm. really take over. He's yeah. a little bit younger than Joe, just a little bit older than me. It's like somewhere in the middle, so he's probably the next one. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? I mean, there's been, I think some people have said it's because of the image of the sport. There might be something about the availability of training facilities. I mean, you're right outside the club now, I guess, aren't you? You've been practising this morning. I just, uh, I had a hangover, so I just came in for some food. <laughs> <laughs> After the old England game yesterday. <laughs> uh, my dad was down here as well, so I just came down to see him. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you put it down to? Is, is is there too much now that people can do when they're younger and maybe not be interested? In, like snooker is is just not in the right place to appeal to younger players. Where is it? I just don't think it is. I just don't think as a as a young player now you don't. I think yeah, there's too too many other sports that have really taken the young people. Like football, everybody now wants to play mm. football, everybody wants to play like golf and things like that. I just yeah, snooker is a little bit left behind really for the British youngsters, I think. In China it's it's massive, isn't it? Snooker. Yeah. So yeah. That's probably why they'll take over soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess that's the bit, isn't it? In, in a way, I mean, you can't turn the clock back, but perhaps if your dad wasn't who he was, perhaps you wouldn't have been here now as a snooker player either. No, exactly. I can't imagine that I would... I would even, yeah, I would probably never even have stepped in a snooker club unless it was to play with my friends, pool, whatever. And so, yeah, if it weren't for my dad, I probably wouldn't do it either. No, But I no. think if you ask most people, most people start because of the parents, don't they? Going down yeah. to the snooker club with your dad and things like that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, there's normally an influence there, isn't there? I don't think many kids kind of come through school and think, oh, what shall I do? I, I fancy a bit of that snooker. It's just... Maybe the mid '80s when it was on TV more, and there was only like four or five channels. Then maybe, but um, you can do a million and one things now, can't you, with your time? Yeah, I'm not even sure how to make it more attractive. Either I know Judd did that interview, didn't he, about making the game more attractive? But mm. it's tough. You can't just like you can't just say, "Oh, we're going to make it more attractive." Like, how how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think, didn't he mention about almost the way, you know, the way people are dressed for the big tournaments and almost mm. dressing up to go out for an evening meal and then playing a sport? Because I guess the shootout is probably the closest you get to something a bit bit more modern in a way, don't you? Yeah, I agree with everything Judd's saying, to be fair. It needs, it is getting a little bit left behind, like the old-fashioned wise, but it's tough, and it? It's tough to make the right call on things like this, so it needs... Needs quite a few meetings between all the top people and maybe a couple of pros like Judd who can maybe take the game on to the next level. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. And let, well, let's hope it. You know, let's hope it'll stay popular and they can find a way to kind of regenerate that interest. But it, yeah, as you say, it may be. And there's lots of sports like that, aren't they? I mean, I'm quite into. I used to be into speedway and things like that. And again, that's yeah, you yeah. know, an, an ice hockey in the UK, things like that, which always seen as minority sports. But they had a time where. On the BBC, you know, they were like the main attraction at one time. And it's, as you say, there's just so many attractions and it has to keep changing to appeal to people. Yeah, of course. And then when you see tournaments like the football that's on at the minute, that like, just makes you want to play, I think. I think mm. when you see a tournament that's going on and it's really good, I think it makes you want to you give it a go, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and I suppose with football, you can go outside and just put two jumpers down and, and you're in, aren't you? You've got a game, whereas obviously with snooker, you need to get the... I mean, you might be able to borrow a queue, but you need to get the equipment. Not many people have a big snooker table in the in the back garden or not the back garden, but, you know, in the, in the in an extension or something. You can't just walk off and go, I'm going to go and play competitive snooker now. It's just not quite as simple. No, it takes a lot of effort. Like, I've got a good friend that plays rugby league to a, well, his pro, and he was telling me when he was younger, all he needed was a pair of boots. Yeah. yeah. That's literally it. And then went outside on the grass and was just playing all the time. Yeah, yeah. So any ideas? So I get, you wonder if there'll be some sort of review. It'd be good to see, you know, I mean, obviously kind of Barry Earns like stepped back a little bit, hasn't he? But whether there's something around people involved at that level might be really starting to think about what needs to happen because... This is all good, isn't it, for a while? But if, if people lose interest, then you know, it'll be consigned to a moment in time and that'll be it, which would be sad. Yeah, I don't. I just don't know what they're going to do, to be honest. I think if it carries on like this, then we're struggling for the younger British players. Yeah. Well, you well, what you it's clear what you need to do. I mean, every, everyone who's in the game now just needs to have kids and grandkids and bring them <laughs> up to play sneaker. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what we got to do. <laughs> Easy as that. Yeah, just keep it going. Keep the line going. That'll do it. <laughs> um, and we mentioned, so I'm harking back to the game in terms of the, the Speedway 19. The, the PlayStation League is the one that's kind of spawned this podcast, if you like. Um, and I know you're into your FIFA, you like your football. And you, you said, you kind of said before we came into this, you said that you've tried it with the Snooker 19 game. But how did you find it? It wasn't so easy. Oh, no, I lost a bit of patience. I didn't have enough time to get good at it. I kept losing and it kept winding me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Yeah, it was a tricky game to get at the start. You, If I didn't play on, like, beginner or amateur, whatever it was, <laughs> so I couldn't win. <laughs> uh, that must be quite soul-destroying because you, mu you must think, hang on a minute, if this was a proper game, they wouldn't get near me, but this is a whole <laughs> different ball game, isn't it? <laughs> I even played. I even played as myself, and I still couldn't win. That's when it. That's when I had to turn it off. <laughs> what's it? What's it like seeing yourself immortalised in a game? Oh, I was a bit surreal at first. I never ever thought I would be on a game, uh, especially when people were sending me like pictures of me versus my dad on an actual game that they was playing on PlayStation. Oh, yeah. It was. It was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Are you pleased with the likeness, with the way they've done it all? I think it looks all right, yeah. It looks quite good. <laughs> yeah, there was what I know if you YouTube, I think there was um there was a flukes reel. There's always flukes reels everywhere on YouTube. Oh, you know, this player who did this. I think there's one where you played your dad and there's a there's a pretty good whopping one in that one. Do you remember it? I remember it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he showed me it the other day, he was watching it for some reason. He said, What do you think about this? I said, I played it. <laughs> I played it. You've always got you've got to claim it, haven't you? You never just kind of give that one up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to. <laughs> and do you? You know, I'm I'm just curious. It's just you know we've we've not had anybody yet on the podcast who's in the game that we're all involved in, and that's that's how a group of us have built up a bit of a community. But do you get any say in that? Is it a case that you know almost by signing up to the tour, then your image rights are included? So I'm presuming you didn't get much involved with them putting you into the game as such. No, um, I think, yeah, you just hit it on the head. I think when we sign a contract at the start of the season, they can use all our image rights. So, didn't yeah, really didn't have a say. We did a photo shoot for it, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, not nothing else. Be good if you got royalties, wouldn't it? If you got like, I don't know, like 50 pence every time somebody pretended to be you, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've got a few questions. Some of the guys on the on the group have said, you know, I let them know that we were going to do this. So I, I asked them if they had anything they wanted to ask. Um, and one of the ones you've touched on a little bit, but uh, kind of going back to you and your dad, really. So, and I, you've been on other podcast, you've been asked this before, but there was one about how it was like playing your dad. But just to kind of expand on that a little bit, somebody else said, is it easier and is there less pressure? Because if you lose... You're, you're pleased for your dad, even though you're disappointed with yourself. And the same the other way. Is there an element of that? Or is it just you're two different players when you get in there? Um, it's a good question. Good question. <laughs> uh, I never really looked at it like 
if I lost this, then I'd still be happy because uh, I don't think I could ever go into a match thinking like that, yeah. even though it was against my dad. Yeah, it was really tough. Like, I just, you know, when you're beating someone and yeah, they're sat in the seat. You usually quite yeah. happy. Like, oh, I want to keep him sat there. I want to yeah. win this easy. Because it was my dad, I didn't want to keep him sat in his seat. I wanted him to be <laughs> playing shots. I just wanted him. I wanted to sit there and watch him. Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah, it was an ex- it was a good experience, but one that I hope don't really ever happen again. Unless really, it's, unless it's yeah in a final, but yeah. even that won't be nice. Yeah, someone's got to lose, haven't they? And it's just yes, yeah, not a nice feeling at all. No, so so it sounds like it's. You can't treat it like just any other game. By the sound of it, it sounds like the closeness you've got. It it never's going. It's never going to be quite normal. You two playing each other in a competitive match. No, because it, he always supports me, and I mm. always support him. And in in them couple of hours, we've got to somehow try and change our mindset to I want to beat him. He wants yeah. to beat me, and it. I just found it. I found it a bit impossible to be honest. It was yeah. a shocking game. I don't know how many of you watched it. Neither of us could put a ball. <laughs> well, we'll watch it. Anyone who hasn't watched it, maybe they'll watch it now anyway, especially when they see the flute. Uh, not the flute, the one that you went for, sorry. Oh, I went for that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about your favourite band? Somebody else has asked. They're, 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 in, they're big into the music. Are you into your music? Um, I like dance music, me. Uh-huh. Like EDM and stuff like that. I think just from going to Vegas and that with, the, with Judd, you, you just get into the dance music and then, yeah, I just love listening to that now. Something that you can just, like, move your head to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When did you go to Vegas? Uh, we've been, like, four times. We usually go every wow. summer, but obviously the last couple of years we haven't been able to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. That, that sounds like, yeah, that'd be cool. Is there anybody else in the group? Is it mainly you and Judd? Uh, Judd's brother. Jack oh, yeah. and, our, and our manager Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he manages both of us now. Yeah. Right. Judge Brother, which is quite cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. How, how is it having a manager? Does that does that work well for you? Well, yeah, he's just, he's, he's just helpful. Like, he just sorts everything out and doesn't have to do anything. So if I've ever got a problem as well, I just ring him and he tries yeah. his best to sort it out for me. So, and he's one of my best friends, so that, that works even better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get some funny stories, don't you? I don't know if you ever read any of like Stephen Andrews' book or anybody like that, but you get stories about how the managers have drilled them and um, yeah, a lot of the man management stuff, old old school, like Neil Warnock. I seen uh, I seen one of Stephen Andrews. I think it was a while ago, but yeah, it's, it's nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and you said about the Euros earlier, and obviously your love of football. There's quite uh, most. Of, I think I don't know about most of us. A lot of us on the group are big football fans as well. Um, obviously, Leeds United is your one, and and obviously one of your guys now kind of showing up well for England. Um, just wonder, you know, you look back at the BLC era and look at what's happened since he's come in. I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Honestly, it's unbelievable. The man, the guy himself, is just incredible. The the way he's made this team play. Is it's ridiculous. Like Phillips yesterday was phenomenal, like man of the match. And people were doubting, like, oh, like he shouldn't be playing and things like this. But I've been telling everybody for so long, like he's he's actually so good. And when he doesn't play, Leeds are never the same. But mm. yesterday, everybody saw it. I seen comments yeah. saying I was doubting of this and this, but he really proved everyone wrong. And even just for people like Bamford and. Ailing mm-hmm. and Harrison to even be mentioned for the England team. It's, yeah, yeah. It's crazy what he's done. He's an unbelievable manager, and I think every Leeds fan would say we're lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm a Forest fan. I mean, Bamford started at Forest as a kid, and then I think they sold him to Chelsea because they needed, they were desperate for money at that point. But yeah, you just look at it now, and I mean, even coming up from the Championship, you had West Brom and Fulham came up with Leeds, didn't they? But both have gone straight yeah. back. And I wondered if the lack of crowds would be a problem for Leeds, because surely that would be one of the things, especially at home. Well, in fact, they bring a, a, a big away following, but that doesn't seem to have really held them back. I don't. I think we spent like 60, 70 million, but he, he spent it so wise. Mm. He bought an attacking player and two centre backs, and the centre backs have really been that class for us. Yeah. Also, the keeper, 
the keeper is only 20 or whatever he is. He's really young, but he's just, he's just so good. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing story, isn't it? Um, and and do you get... Rafinha. Rafinha, mm. we only got him for like 17 million. He must be worth 70 now. Well, easy. Yeah, easy. You just got to keep hold of him now, haven't you? Yeah, that's the problem now. If Phillips keeps going the way he is, obviously the big clubs are going to try and get him. But I know he's a Leeds lad, so it's hard and it's hard to leave Leeds when you're a Leeds lad. Yeah, yeah. Well, he can't go to many much bigger clubs, can he? I mean, there are a few in the top kind of group, but I mean, Leeds aren't a little club, are they? I mean, you know, the fan base is incredible and they've been there and they've been at the top level. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, but it's obviously champion, Champions League, isn't it? Yeah. That's, the, that's the one that everybody wants to play in. And I think he'll stay for maybe a couple more years and then hopefully anyway. Yeah, yeah. I know, it's great. It's great to see. It's nice to see some teams mixing it up a bit. And I miss him, to be honest, being a Forest fan. And when he came to, to Forest with Leeds, he'd sit on his little bucket. And I miss that. There's not enough managers sit on buckets. <laughs> but he just drinks coffee as well all game. Crazy. <laughs> Brilliant. OK. Um, and go, let's, let's go back a little bit, just back to yourself, thinking of the, you know, the tour now, you know, coming up and, and obviously... Uh, Q clubs finished now, and there must be something about thinking ahead at where the, you know the next kind of year is going. I mean, what's your aspirations? What are you hoping to do? Um, I'd love to make like a big tournament semi final next year. Yeah, I think my game's in a lot better shape now than what it has been. I think I'm a lot better mentally now than I have been. And mm. Towards the end of the season, I started playing a lot better. Um, signed with Sight Right, Steve Feeney. Halfway through last season, and I think it's really going to help my game this year. Yeah, we only did like maybe a month before the world championship, and then first round, I made three centuries. I missed the black on 93 as well for a fourth century. Oh. I just started playing a lot better, so yeah, I'm quite optimistic for next year. Yeah, so you kind of it sounds like you're going to hit the ground running a bit, really, then all being well. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I don't want to get off to a slow start again and put myself under it having to win matches just to catch up. But if I can just play the first few tournaments, win quite a few matches, and I'll put myself in a good position to just yeah. like crack on for the full year. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you kind of talked a bit about, uh, and and crazily enough, I mean, I'm going back to the, the Snooker 19 PlayStation League. I mean, it's not the real thing, obviously, it's not, but it's surprising when we talk about it to each other, just playing online, how there is a similar kind of thing. There's nerves involved. It's it's weird because it's, you know, it's not really, there's no money at stake, but there's a bit of nerves involved. There's con a lot of concentration. And especially when you're at home, somebody goes and starts building a break and you go and get a coffee and then you come back in. You, you don't have to at least sit there and you see and watch them. That's the only good thing. <laughs> no, I know what you mean though. I don't, like, you just, I don't think in most people, no matter what they do, you, you never want to lose, do you? No. So there's always pressure. No matter what you're doing, it's that you never want to lose. No, no. And is that is that something that you said about kind of confidence and nerves and, and the way you approach it mentally? Is that a big part of your approach, do you think, that can improve? Is that what you're seeing now? Yeah, I think last few years I've struggled confidence-wise just to maybe believe that I'm good enough to be winning tournaments, things like that, and... Yeah, confidence is a massive, massive part yeah. of snooker. You see, yeah. when Judd started winning his first few tournaments, he looked unbeatable for yeah. so long. And most of the time he was. But mm. because he was so confident, people were missing shots they wouldn't usually miss. Yeah. It's weird how it goes, but that's the sort of things that happen. Yeah. Does he give you any tips? I mean, I suppose some of that is hard to manufacture, isn't it? I guess you, you have to work on it, don't you? Yeah, I think... It, Basically, the only tip he's ever given me is just practice as much as possible. Mm. The shots that you're not confident on, just practice them till you know that you're not going to miss it ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No fair play. I'm good. I'm just going to ask you a few. Uh, these are a bit, to be honest, these are a bit silly, really, a bit daft. Um, some quick fire ones to just find out a bit more about you. And, and it's and all the guys on the pods in the past on the group, they've all answered it as well. So, um, so they'll get a bit of the same. So. And the answer might be neither. So the first one is Star Wars or Star Trek. No, I've never seen either. <laughs> Haven't you? No. Oh, man. Oh. Well, I would say start with Star Wars, but if, you, if it's not your bag, then that's fine anyway. 
Um, and going back a little bit, this is maybe more about either styles of play or about the personalities in the game. But I always ask everybody, who do you prefer? If you think back to like Cliff Forbin and Alex Higgins, if you were to go back there, have you got any preferences? Alex, Alex Higgins. Right. I just love that style of play. When you watch yeah. him, you can't not be entertained, can you? Oh, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Um, cats or dogs? Fairly easy one. Dogs. Have we got some? No, I actually haven't. <laughs> but, uh, I would like to get one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you, about having the time to look after it, it? <laughs> well, that's it. You'd have to, you'd have to maybe employ a dog sitter or something when you're away. Yeah. <laughs> um, New York or New Zealand? Uh, New York. Right. You like the city life. I just love America. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's class. Where else have you been apart from Vegas? Have you have you been around quite a lot of it then? The... Not really. No, not not as much as I'd like to. But I've never. I just don't like the thought of going to New Zealand. It's just right. too far. It is a too long way. Far. Yeah. It'd take me like a week to get over that flight. Yeah, yeah, fair one. Um, and fish and chips are a posh meal out. Fish and chips. There you go. Some people have muddled that one up and said, I'll have a posh meal out, but I'll have fish and chips, but do it posh. So that, they've tried <laughs> to combine them both. I actually don't think you can beat fish and chips out on a wall when it's really sunny. It's like, yeah, yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, so, I mean, that's kind of us to the end, really. I mean, I, I just wanted to say to you, really, Oliver, I mean, thanks again because you, you're a real star and to get in contact with us just, it's always awkward when you approach somebody because you don't want them to think, well, who the hell's this kind of bothering me out of the blue? You know, it's like cold calling for windows or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, it's really good of you to, to spend some time. And I think the guys and, and anyone else watching, I think they'll enjoy it and, and get to know you a bit more. Um, so yeah, that's it really from me is just to say thanks so much for, for coming in and, uh, you know, maybe in the future, perhaps, um, in the season or at some convenient point, it might be nice to catch up again. Oh yeah, no problem. Anytime, mate, just message me. I'm happy to do any interviews I can do. Quality, quality. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me as well. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And, and, and obviously if, if your dad or Judd ever wants to do it, you know, you can point them in our direction. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I can ask, I can ask either of them if you want me to but but yeah but anyway no i mean it's really good i know i, I know from the guys they were buzzing when they heard that we were going to get somebody on he's, he's actually playing at the level you're playing at and i think we'll all follow your career a lot more closely now um and and obviously we'll all look at the youtube between you and your dad and we'll, we'll all see how that one went <laughs> um but yeah great, just really grateful for your time and and uh yeah we'll we'll feature this on the podcast and for anybody else out there if you, you know, want to get involved and tell us what you thought of it then just go for our social media and our different channels and um you know all the best for the season mate and i think it's it's been good fun talking to you and and you're a good guy and i wish you all the very best Oh, thank you, mate. Cheers. <laughs>